All right, very good morning. Um, thank you, Arun, for inviting me uh, today uh, to present some thoughts in front of this August audience. And I, I'm really hoping that, you know, after Mr. Goswami's really mind-blowing address, you know, I'll be able to uh, do justice to what I am doing. And then when you are saying, sir, a lot of things basically I thought will build on. And so I hope we'll be able to see some correlations over there. <clears throat> so. Uh, from Tata Technology, we, we are part of the Tata Group, um, and Tata Group needs no introduction. Uh, we have been in the industry as Tata Technologies for about uh, 30 years now, um, close to the same, uh, my experiences. Um, we are about half a billion uh, size, uh, slightly bigger, uh, and about 13,000 engineers, and we only cater to three sectors, auto, um, aero, and then industrial and I take care of the industrial. And so that's a very, so we, we believe in the meter wide and mile deep strategy. And so we don't want to be everything to everybody and something to somebody. <clears throat> so um, from Tati Technologies, and if you see the, um, uh, the product as a life cycle, it right, typically goes through three, life, uh, three swim lanes. You know, it starts with concept which goes through the go-to-market swim lane. And then once the concept is taken to production readiness, then the manufacturing life cycle begins. And traditionally, there are two things, you know, the traditional manufacturing uh, and now the industry 4.0, and still we have not started to talk about 5, uh, but 4.0. And then once the product hits the market, then comes the aftermarket services. And of course, there are a lot of digital solutions that has been developed uh, by the industry also we, as part of it, uh, we have crystallized the knowledge, uh, the learnings that we have had, and then made them into digital tools. Uh, <clears throat> so, which kind of segues to today's discussion. Um, I want to touch upon two things. You know, while um, from, a, from the trends that have started uh, in the manufacturing industry, I mean, there are whole bit. I want to pick one trend and then, you know, dwell a little deeper into it, but also talk about what are some of the concerns that the industry is going through. Um, and then, you know, try to show some case studies which kind of bridges these gaps. And that's basically what my next 20 to 25 minutes are. Um, so, um, so, I mean, we will take questions at the end. Uh, I might not be uh, completely aware, but if, I'm, if I don't have an answer, I will get back to you, I promise that. Uh, before I start, let me uh, let me tell an interesting story that happened about uh, close to now two years back. Um, <clears throat> so one of the one of the OEMs had invited us uh, for a digital solution. So their situation was this: that they are uh, a mining manufacturer. Uh, they they build uh, 50 ton, 40 ton plus mining trucks, and so this basically was for a 100 tonner body. Um, the the setup was such that there are two stations, um, and it is both robo-activated. Um, one station, while the robot does the, the welding, the others, other station, the operators, does the, the transition points, like the corners, basically, because the robot was not capable or designed to actually do all those corner stuff. So the plant manager who came to us basically said that the, the robo-welding part is good, but then we are not very sure of the part where the manual welding is happening, and we need a digital solution wherein the checking of those corners, uh, that needs to be replaced by a digital solution. That was the ask. And so we went, as a, we went as a team, and then we saw what the current process was. So once the welding is completed, then it goes to this inspection station. And then uh, an operator comes in with um, non-destructive testing tools and then goes around checking. Um, and then wherever there is a crack or imperfect weld, then he would put a mark around in a chuck, right? And then, in, then it will go to the next station where they would gouge it and then they would do the welding. So now the, op, the, the plant manager's request was, I want to eliminate this guy. And then I want this, I don't know if he is checking everything, so digital solution should ensure that you know, checking happens 100%. said, okay, fine. And then so, we proposed a solution where, you know, we um, extended reach Kobo, mounted on an AGV, and then we will have to put an industrial camera on, on the stuff. So you get AGV moves back and forth, and then the, uh, so you get two two dimensional uh, movement there, and then the Kobo gives you the Y axis. So you have three axis, plus of course the, uh, the arm over there, 
so you are able to cover. And then the industrial camera feeds back to a uh, machine vision system, pre-trained, trained, um, and then it is going to identify which are the areas where the rework needs to happen. So this is basically what we sell. And then there was a lot of back and forth about, you know, will this work, are there other things, all sorts of stuff. And so we showed a lot of cases. And I mean, the standard selling process. So those of you who are in part of the services, you understand what we go through, right? And then came the clincher. So the ask was that the, uh, the, uh, the operator who does this checking, so we pay three lakh rupees annually, I mean, contractor. So I want the system one year payback and therefore it should be within three lakh rupees. The camera that I was actually planning to mount itself was about two and a half lakh rupees. Forget about the AGV and the COBO and the engineering time and all that stuff, right? Obviously that discussion did not go too well because we could not take that level of a cut to provide a solution. And so, which basically is what I want to touch upon today um, in terms of the thought process, right? You know, so as Mr. Goswami rightly mentioned, the COVID time basically gave a jump start to digitization. Uh, so what a CIO could not do for last 20 years, those one six months basically made a change. And then, you know, it was proved that, you know, things could be done um, outside. It could be digital made a big uh, impact. However, the, the thought still is, it's too expensive, right? You know, I can still put a guy and I can still get something done. Um, so why, why do you, why do we want to invest this level of stuff? So I, I, I kind of was remembering, you know, when I bought my sister her first laptop long time back, uh, not laptop, actually it was a desktop computer. In today's terms, it was almost three and a half lakh rupees. Now today for 2025, maybe 30,000 rupees, you get a beautiful, extremely good capability laptop as compared to what we purchased at that time. Technology changes, but changing the, the taking that technology as a cost and then trying to make the decisions is something that we need to think about, right? And then the second question of what, what if we choose wrong? There are so many technologies out there. How to know what it is? Is there some um, easy, quick and dirty way of doing this thing? So I'll show you some examples of how we can do that. Then the, the major pitfall that I see is this replicate the current process on the, from the digital assets that you are bringing, right? You know, so when man learned how to use cement, he did not replicate the wooden designs that were there in the past. He learned how to use concrete and the strength of concrete and then design for that thing, you know? You can't take the old process and then replicate in the new ecosystem. And so by doing that, you get into this whole, um, rebuild the whole same thing again, and then, you know, which you won't get the power of the digital tools that has been um, brought into the place. And then, and then there are a lot of these apprehensions that, you know, our setup is too complex. You know, I mean, it won't work for us. You know, we have this mix of, you know, we need to do this, we need to do that, whatever. So I will show you some examples through case studies that, you know, it is not, it's not so. I mean, so if there is a will, there is a way, right? And um, and then this classic thing, right? You know, after all the discussion, it will be, okay, fine. You know, there is budget constraints. I don't know, we will take this up for the next step. Basically, we will do this later, right? So, I mean, I don't want to tell myself that, you know, I I don't want to touch this. It's a nice way of telling ourselves, you know, that, you know, we will for now park it for some time, right? Remember that um, adage, Chinese adage, right? You know, what's the best time to uh, plant a tree? It's 20 years back. After that, now. Always now, right? So if you haven't done the digitization, it is at this time that, you know, start thinking about it. Because when, when there is, so if there is an advantage that you have planned or if there is a process that needs to be replaced, that basically becomes the tangible benefits that you can actually see. But digitization provides a lot of intangible benefits. It can't be measured, but it brings in 
that um, that benefit, right? You know, like for example, efficiency, productivity. These are all straight stuff. Servers talking about scalability. So the the level of scalability, what an Excel file provides versus what a data data set provides, and then in a, a, a tool like an Oracle or SAP or whatever. It's a very different ball game altogether. The decision making becomes very fast. Uh, the 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 way we visualize data becomes extremely good. Uh, I impl in, implemented uh, Power BI. I mean, it's a, it's a very simple analytics tool. Uh, and what data you have in Excel, you know, you can just take that and then you know put that in Power BI. But the insights that you get, but the insights that you get from Power BI, uh, once you start looking at the data in that manner, is very very different. So um, the, in that my, in my previous organization, and so what insights I could actually provide, people were able to see only six months later. So at that time, you know, people were, how did you know? So I said, you know, here, this is the tool, do it, free, available, as part of our set, right? But the thought of getting in, doing it, is what is really required, and that what I request the audience to start thinking, you know, when you go back to your place of work, when you start looking at your investments, think about all the things that the digitization can come in, uh, the the benefits that as an organization we can get. And with that small preamble, I will try to show a few examples that we have uh, made in digitization. Specifically, the uh, focus today is going to be on the vision systems. and. We have, as Tata Technologies, we have developed a, a vision system, um, and it it's actually has the engine of AIML. Uh, I'll talk to that briefly. And these examples are basically using that tool. It has been there, but it is not selling that tool. Uh, it is there are similar such tools available um, in market, and therefore uh, see the examples as a use case for vision systems A and B. Think beyond, right? You know that is something that you know I request my customers always. If I show this example and it, if the thought comes, oh, I don't have this particular case, therefore it will not work. It is, it's not the right way of looking at these digital assets. Think of it as a system has got brains and then we have given it eyes. So what can we do if with these two additional features for a system? then you will start opening up your thought process to see the possibilities of what the digitization can come. And in this, in this particular example, uh, this was for a, a radiator manufacturers, and so they had almost 230 plus uh, different configurations, um, small volumes, and, um, uh, and then the expectation was that you know these edges, they used to get damaged, and they wanted a system for quality check. And uh, so basically we did this complete um, project for them, including how to hold the, uh, the radiator and then, you know, set up of the, uh, how to take the photos and then the backend system for reading that, training the model. We have few pre-trained models and then we had to train that again. So all that and basically we came up with, here is a small video which I want to play for you. So, so what you see is basically there is a defect that it's being pointed, and then in the mobile, the same data is being captured for the vision system, which goes to the vision system, uh, which is this, wherein the, the defect has been highlighted. And so for this basically to happen, the, the, the model needs to be trained that, you know, to identify that this particular thing is basically an error. And so with that database that is available, uh, it sees what has been given to it and then compares and then identifies that, you know, oh, here, there is a there is an issue over there. So which, if you extrapolate in your um, manufacturing setup, it could be it could be an operator who is assembling something, you know, forget about this. You know, he, if there is a 20 parts that needs to be taken from 20 bins and assemble, now, if the sequence is changed, you know, you can put a camera over there and then train the model to track what component is coming after what component. 
and then if there is a difference in the assembly process, it gets flagged. Or if the right incorrect part is picked from the bin, that can get flagged. So it's basically the limitation on the digitization is the limitation of our thought process. So what we can imagine, the capabilities are there in these systems to go beyond that, basically. So ne next, here is, here is one more. So you might have a concern that, you know, oh, okay, fine, that is a very static thing. You have kept something over there. There is a, a lot of time to put and measure, and all mine is a process industry. Things are moving very fast. Digitization won't work. Here is an example which I picked. This is steel mill, basically. Um, so what you see here is this is uh, the steel roll that is running anywhere between 300 to 500 meters per minute. Uh, that's the speed at which it's going. And so the use case there was that you know there were blemishes that were happening when the the rolling happens. And so the uh, the manufacturer wanted to identify where those blemishes were because after that it goes into a roll. So they, if they want to fix it, they need to know exactly where it is. So they wanted to identify where it was, take its coordinates, and then ensure that you know later on if they have to fix it when they unwind it, they know where exactly to go. So that was basically the use case. So the speed is not a problem. Speed is not a problem. So uh, if there is, if you have a process which is going fast, it still works. And you might have seen few sorting uh, kind of applications. Uh, it could be something used in uh, industry. I mean, even in uh, recycling industries, these things have been where the feed is actually fed back to a, um, uh, a robo, which actually goes and picks the material so that the sorting happens, glass versus plastic versus paper versus whatever. Right? So it's basically the application. Now, here is a third third one. This was basically done for airline industry. So um, the before the flight pulls back, um, there is a pin that would be there for the landing gear so that, you know, landing gear accidentally does not fold when it is parked. But then the same pin needs to be removed perfectly because if not, when the flight takes off, it can't pull back in. So it is, it's basically hazardous. So uh, the Singapore Airlines basically wanted a, a solution where they wanted to check if the, if this has been happening when their uh, technician comes and removes that thing. So we did a, uh, we did basically, we did a video analytics on, on this and, uh, and I hope the, yeah. So, so it is identifying that there is, there is a, um, a pin. So the operator comes in and then he, he pulls it. It even tracks in his hand uh, that the pin has been removed. So the 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 importance of this case here is that the size of the component, basically. I mean, with the size of the the the, the environment that is there, the complexity you will have to see that. So at the end of the day, it is the complexity of how much elements are there within the uh, the video, right? Within that, the system is actually able to identify what specifically you look for. You know, it's a small pin, and then it identifies whether it can actually be done or not. So, if the concern is my components are too small, and then the the analytics may not be able to work on it, the vision system may not be able to work on it. That's not the case. There are examples where it it does work. Um, here is here is a little more um, simpler case study. Uh, wherein one of our uh, one of our um, customers during COVID time, he wanted to know that you know people were following the um, social distancing, and so they wanted to identify um, they wanted to identify if there was hello um, <clears throat> if if there was if there were uh, issues in terms of um, how close people were coming, and so. We showed this and then we also said, we took this to few of our material handling uh, customers as well to show you could pro use the same algorithm, but then train it instead of people, you can train it for machines. And then you can see if there is a coll collision part. Did two forklift come too close the, to comfort? Uh, or something which was supposed, it did 
an operator's head come too close to a, a overhang. You know, anything like this can actually be done. So we basically provided that use case for one of our customers. Um, so let me just show that. I'll not play the video fully. Uh, what is, I think it has the same, same issue here. Um, nevertheless, what basically happens is when they're too close, uh, it turns red, and then the, there is a counter on top, the counter increases, so. Yes, thank you. <laughs> this was a, a case again uh, for, see the, the versatility of the solution, the digital solution, right? So here was a case where the, the customer is basically a power sector uh, guy, and they wanted to know the rivets that go on these, these towers. Uh, what is the level of erosion, or the corrosion that is happening? What is the health of the towers? Right, and the process that they followed was that you know people would actually climb up uh, and then test and check each of these rivets and the quality of the rivets, the quality of the tower corrosion that's happening, and make the decision. A, it's unsafe. B, time-consuming. And then you know C, there is a lot of data points which might get missed, and so they were looking for a, a solution that was there. And so the solution that we provided was a drone-based system. Everything is same, right? In a back end, it's the same camera capturing the same image, going to the same vision system. But then the way it is getting captured is through a drone. So fly the drone, get the images, put it back into the system, and then you know we identified that there are like these five, six different types of uh, uh, corrosion or the way the things can fail. So the those systems could uh, so those. Uh, those uh, issues could actually be identified on the system. So there is no video for that. Visimatic is the tool that we have developed. And uh, if you are interested, you know, please feel free to contact me. I will put my team to explain to you a little more in detail on the architecture and even maybe your use case and then, you know, how it can happen. So there are a lot of module-based um, module solutions that we have developed. So you will basically be able to combine multiple things and then create solutions. So uh, if it's of interest, it could be uh, taken. Um, and then, you know, one, one, one quick thing I want to um, talk about, right, uh, is this thought process that are we choosing the right thing? Is that investment really going to be of uh, use for me? Um, this tool, is so flexible, so lean, that actually it can get on a Raspberry Pi. Um, and if you know Raspberry Pi, uh, it is about a three, four thousand rupees uh, board, and you know a lot of hobbyists actually do it for programming and doing some small robotic stuff. This is basically a robot. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi, and this is a small camera. And we basically did a small POC which had about two, three features. For, this was basically for uh, an automobile. Uh, manufacturer who wanted to do drowsiness, basically, fatigue monitoring system. So we proved that, you know, this is possible. You, you can actually track the movement of eyes and, um, and then predict if uh, the driver or the operator is actually feeling drowsy. And so um, I think I, I didn't include that video. But so something as simple as that. Is that a production? Uh, solution, no. You still have to do a lot of work to take that to production. But to prove that will it work or not, we have something over there, right? So that's, uh, that's the thought process there. Um, and here is one more framework that we have developed that uh, we call it as Smart Industry uh, Readiness Index. Uh, a lot of, lot of times, question comes in as to where we are and where we need to go, because there is a lot of this thought about Industry 4.0, we need to bring this, we need to get digital tools. So a lot of these thoughts come in, but there is no map per se um, in the industry where, uh, at least which we have not come across, where uh, we are able to make a qualitative, comprehensive assessment of where we are, and then jot where we want to go and then provide a map, a roadmap for how to go there. So that was an ask from the industry for which we basically developed a, a, a roadmap, and we are trying to popularize this as well, um, so that you know it becomes a more accepted industry standard, um, the SIRI framework. Uh, 
comprehensive almost uh, 20 different parameters and then you know it is basically about a two to three weeks of activity at the plant detailed assessment happens and then identify where what is what is the current maturity level and then how to get to the level based on there could be a lot of constraints you know it could be product constraints capital time so be it but taking all those providing a roadmap for those those who are interested to go is something that you know we we are able to get over there so in summary digital basically is there to stay um, there could be concerns in your mind but then it is it is something that can be over uh, overcome the technologies are out there which may feel expensive but from the overall benefits that they deliver by implementation it is very very different so uh, so start thinking in terms of uh, having uh, your uh, digital journey because to start the right time is now so thank you very much any questions Yes, sir. Data analytics image capturing that tool. So uh, ah. generally, if we say the uh, data analytics, so, yeah. Visimatic, something like that, does it comprises of uh, the extraction of data from the different data sources, then make it in a kind of yes. in a structured format? Yeah. Then we can prepare or yeah. build and deploy the machine learning algorithm or yes. model. We train the model and then yeah. uh, we can capture it in a visualization analytics. Yeah. So yeah. all these three parameters can be well captured in this uh, visualization. Yeah, yeah, it goes beyond that. Actually, it has OCR capabilities. It has actually handwritten capabilities. It can actually take um, voice. Um, so there, all these are basically built as modules and we have put that on cloud as well. So it does not matter what your source of uh, uh, data, data is. is. So here the case is, we have taken the data coming from camera and from video, uh, video camera, and then use the AML, the uh, analytics capability, video analytics and um, um, video analytics capabilities basically to provide these use cases. But the data can come in any which way you want. Okay. And visualization analytics and also takes yeah. place in, in, in the yes, same yes. environment. So we have a few use cases where you know we have actually done the invoicing, uh, the PO correctness, or extracting the PO and then putting that into the system, you know, like that there are multiple such use cases possible. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Good morning, sir. Sir. Thanks for giving us the presentation regarding the Visimatic. With the same thing, uh, I am talking about a normal manufacturing process in terms of a SMD. Okay, in SMD, we are implementing the AOI right now. We are using a AOI. AOI, automatic optical inspection. Okay. Okay, it is also vision system. Same, yeah. Right? Yep. So, we are uh, giving one reference image to that and the, what are the actual images coming. So, we are just comparing with that and we are making a judgment. Yep. It is okay or not okay. Yep. So, it is basis on some data which is already there. Yep by using some AI ML, what would be the added advantage I can give with this system or with this uh, technology and I can get a more correctiveness because after AI also we are finding some issues while we are going further in the SMD manufacturing. So what it can help us that just yeah. yeah. So, um, so by bringing the AI ML engine, the ML part of it. So that is basically what is, I think, the uh, the key advantage because the system keeps learning from the the inputs that come in. So it is just like a small kid growing up, right? You know. So so the more it gets trained, the more accurate it becomes. So the other advantage is that you know there are pre-trained models that are available, so which can actually give a, a shot, just like Matrix, right? You know, just download. So something very similar. So you. There are pre we have about 1,500 pre-trained models for different different scenarios, which can actually give a head start. So these are some of the advantages that brings in by the um, by the by the AI part of it. But by by nature itself, bringing AI technologies into it, 
you can actually extend it much further to Gen AI and then you can have query on those things. It can start identifying patterns out of the issues. So it depends on how far you want to take it forward because the, it's limitless. Okay, thank yeah. you. And also just a clarity, this is not Visionatic as a tool. Yeah, I am, a I am kind of aware of this as a tool. We have worked it together, but similar tools are available outside as well. So it's uh, capabilities might be different and then stuff. But my only point also is that when, when these thoughts come in, try also to work with the experts who understand the system because a lot of times we see that the thought process that we can do this ourselves, right? So um, while it is true, you can take it to a certain level, but working as a domain expert with the, the tool expert or, or the solution expert, you will end up with a much better solution than developing the tool and the, for the domain yourself. Check. Check. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, this has been a great presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, if we could go back to that uh, slide about the landing gear. Which one? Uh, landing gear. Ah. I have a question on that. Yes, uh, I, I do documentation and content for aviation and aerospace uh, manufacturing. That's a part of my work. Uh, what I would like to ask, apart from the, uh, the, the front part of the landing gear, sometimes what happens is, uh, especially during uh, the landing, if it's a hard landing, uh, some of the components uh, within the landing gear uh, get damaged. So would, have you worked on any solutions which could uh, you know, incorporate uh, image and video analytics to detect the same? Okay, so two points here. One was this was actually not a landing gear example. I use this example to show that a pin, a size of a pin in a complex environment such as what right. you see over there, the systems are capable to actually differentiate that stuff. That's point one. Point two, I come from industrial heavy machinery background, so I don't know too much about the what is happening in aero, but I do know that you know they have been working on few predictive maintenance um, algorithms and stuff, but we can connect during after session, during breaks or something where I can connect you with the right people sure. who can provide you some sure. insights there. This actually is uh, something to do with uh, predictive maintenance more than preventive sure. in aviation. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you for thank your you. answer. Uh, I have uh, one view. Uh, sure. Shirish Kulkarni, can you go to the maturity framework uh, yes. diagram? Two, two views. One is uh, how is it mapping to industry 5.0, which is the next gen, has been existing for maybe three plus years, not much adopted in Indian context or across the world, has three pillars. But how does this map uh, to 5.0 was one viewpoint which is important. Second is uh, manufacturing in specific for electric vehicle mm -hmm. would have some flavors and variants. Mm. So is it catering to that also is the second part. Okay, all right. So answering your first question, no, this does not incorporate uh, industry 5.0. Uh, and the reason also is because we mimic where our customers are going. So uh, to a large extent, because at the end of the day, we do of course investments to develop few things and show. Uh, but Predominantly, if we follow the customer, then there is money, right? You know, so at the end of the day, we need to show revenues as well as business leaders. So uh, this basically was a framework that we developed to actually position for some of our known logos to show that, you know, bring a structure to their thought process and then, you know, map that across. So since they are not talking of 5.0, we are not talking of 5.0. Second, this is a industry agnostic framework that we have developed. So I am sure uh, this should be applicable for EV as well. Uh, but if you would be interested, you know, I can bring the right people and we can have a, a separate discussion after. Definitely, it will be uh, interesting to have that flavor uh, Absolutely. within that. I uh, would uh, love to have that. Thank you. Sure. If there are no more questions. Um, thank you very much. It's been a very, very lovely uh, audience and I really enjoyed this.